Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video, I am going to discuss about overview of pharma industries. If you are new here, I am Shamir Marwan. I will be making videos regarding GPAT, Niper, pharmaceutical industries, pharmaceutical colleges. So all those kind of topics I will be covering my in my channel. Those kind of topics are there already uploaded. If you are new here, you can go and watch my old videos related to that. And if you want to follow me on Instagram or LinkedIn where I post pharma related news and quiz pharmacy quiz I am posting on a daily basis on my YouTube channel as well as my Instagram page. You can follow me there. I have left the links in the description box. If you want to follow me on there, you can follow me there. And if you are new here, please press the bell button whenever I am uploading the video then instantly you will get the notification without any delay you can watch my old contents without any delay you will get all the information which I am going to share through my videos so without wasting much time we are going to deep dive into this topic this PPT looks simple but definitely you are going to get something out of this video that is sure there is no doubt about it this video is for pharma aspirants like b farm first year second year or m farm wherever i don't know you are in which position now what but definitely you are going to get something out of this video definitely it is so without wasting any time let's get into that so definition of pharmaceutical industry so pharmaceutical industry involves the research development production and marketing of medications so what they will do they will do research of medicine and they will develop as a formulation then they will produce in a bulk way and they will market these okay after production it has to market right so they will do the marketing as well okay then importance of pharmaceutical industries this is vital for improving health as you everyone know that see without medicine we can't survive in this world right everyone from the newborn to geriatric patients everyone needs medicine it is for treating diseases and enhancing quality of life now nowadays after the you know advancement in the medical field people are not dying because of this cancer and all the life expectancy increased longevity increased because medicine can support in the in the long run it can support a lot so that is also an important thing then the market size see the overview of global market size and growth trends in the sense this is a huge market right everyone needs medicine in this world there is nothing like an exception i don't want medicine i am a superhuman there is nothing no one like that so everyone wants medicine in this world so this is a huge market okay so when it comes to the terminologies research and development r and d what does that mean discovery and development of new drugs for example paracetamol is there for to reduce fever now I want to I want to discover another molecule which should reduce the fever so what I have to do it should work in a such a way that paracetamol works right so the structure should be similar not similar I am saying it should be capable to bind the receptor where pharma, pharma, uh, paracetamol, paracetamol is binding like cox receptors or other receptors so it should able to bind with those receptors I have to conduct some you know docking studies i have to uh, screen down some molecules and then only i can go for the development right after after finalizing the synthesis scheme and everything after finalizing the molecule i have to go for the development i have to make a formulation i can't simply take the powder inside right then i have to test it on uh, animals for the safety any any cancer or something will come or not any malformalities anything will come or not so I have to do that then I have to test on humans so this is the R&D complete R&D I, I would say so discovery and development of new drugs so you got an idea I think manufacturing manufacturing in the sense once I synthesized a molecule and made a formulation then I have to do it in a bulk way right I have to I have to do it in a large scale so production of pharmaceutical production uh, products is called manufacturing then marketing and sales after production it should not be in the warehouse it should not be you know simply in the warehouse it has to be distributed and wherever it has to be promoted it has to be promoted through medical representatives and all so marketing and sales is also required then regulatory affairs so before marketing regulatory affairs come into picture actually 
the thing is if i want to market my medicine in us okay for us i have to comply with the regulatory agency there whatever the rules and regulations that regulatory agency saying this product should be in this this level of impurity must be there uh, this uh, this level of quality should be there this much of assay should be there this much of drug release should be there uh, packaging should be like this all those data whatever the requirements are there according to the country specific guidelines okay i have to comply like according to that and then only they will approve okay then only i can market i have they have to approve first then only i can market my product same slide repeated it is so the key players and market structure so when it comes to the major companies there are top pharmaceutical companies like pfizer johnson and johnson roche merck gsk sanofi these are the giants giants in the sense these are the innovator players they will deal with new new medicines okay when it comes to the market dynamics this is a competitive landscape for example sanofi is making one molecule maybe novartis is also making that so those who finish that first those those who complete the filing first they will get the patent exclusivity and everything right so this is a competitive landscape definitely so what will work in the sense mergers and acquisition will work for example sanofi is thinking like for example i am saying sanofi is thinking novartis is a major competitor for us okay let's acquire that let's take the novartis into our side we otherwise merge with them so they are ruling out the competition there so partnership for example sanofi is making they are doing the r and d okay then novartis is saying okay I, we will market like that so partnership mergers and acquisition so this is the market dynamics of pharmaceutical industry then the geographical distribution i told you the entire world it requires medicine so the key regions are there the market significance the, some some diseases or some conditions are uh, you know uh, you know more prevalent in some areas like uh, 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 north america europe africa so according to that also we have to synthesize or you have to market the product so that is also coming to picture now so when it comes to the drug development process there are several stages i told you in the r and d we have to discover one molecule we have to uh, you know uh, fix the scheme synthesis scheme and everything after docking and everything uh, we have to go for animal studies because any first we are, we are checking safety whether it is safe or not any tumor or anything any malformation uh, is happening or not whether it is rodents or you know there are rabbits for different drugs we, we will go for different uh, then cell line studies are there there are in vitro in vivo lot of studies are there then uh, clinical trials on humans we will check that you know different phases are there then uh, after all these trials human trials and all we will file the data to the regulatory agency fda is for one example uh, we will file that everything is meeting the criteria then only they will uh, give for uh, approval for marketing then after marketing uh, we have to survey we have to do surveillance like uh, any adverse drug uh, events are happening or not there this pharmacovigilance will come into picture so from discovery to post marketing surveillance this is the stage hope you understood this so the timeline is i told you typical duration for a, discovery uh, of a medicine like for a new molecule it will take around you know 10 to 15 years almost so uh, the thing is like may, for example 10 years it will it will take to approve the product sometime then they will get only 5 years for marketing you know this is the this is the case with the uh, new 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 drug uh, you know innovators these players uh, then the cost it will it will cost millions of dollars to you know the develop a new drug because we don't know how much it will cost for clinical trials you know uh, non clinical trials so it, it uh, we have to pump in money like anything for uh, the cost also that's why new drug molecules are very you know most of the companies indian companies can't afford new drugs that's why other com indian companies are not focused on this new drug molecules and all because it has we have to pump in money like anything for that we don't know maybe it may fail in uh, clinical trials maybe uh, approval we won't get so lot of hurdles are there actually that's why most of the companies are not venturing for new drug they are going for the generic drugs 
so i told you regulatory bodies are there different country has different bodies example uh, for us fda is there for europe ema is there japan pmda and uh, brazil anvisa uh, then for uh, australia tga is there canada health canada is there there are lot of regulatory bodies for india cda co is there okay so approval process is like complex steps required for drug approval and market entry see the thing is whatever the data we generated in the r and d we have to compile in a way that it has to be in a presentable way to the regulatory bodies then only they can review so there are some formats which is provided by ich so we have to follow that format ectd format is there so we have to go in a such a way that and you know lot of challenges are there navigating regulatory requirements and compliance issues because they will ask n number of questions these regulatory bodies will ask n number of question why you are using this diluent why you are using class 1 diluent you have to give justifications uh, what is the impurity percentage how much impurities you are getting like like that uh, what is your where is your clinic non clinical trial data where is the safety data so if something is missing i am just giving some examples okay this is not the real picture i am just giving you examples so if something is missing you have to navigate through all those challenges queries and everything then only it will come into the market okay so recent trends and innovations nowadays biotechnology is booming uh, advances in biotech drugs and therapies uh, for example this monoclonal antibodies for example some uh, all the companies are fo focusing on biologics uh, you know it is uh, one of the booming field and you know you can get lot of money of that also personalized medicine according to the genetic makeup we can tailor the treatment and for example for my gene uh, my genetic makeup I, i like they can tailor one medicine for me it is not it will not be same for all like like that okay then digital health in our smartphone we can get consultation you know we can those kind of digital technologies are you know clubbing with you know, health artificial intelligence which can different softwares are there which can predict degradation products impurities uh, you know all those kind of things are there uh, special life all those softwares are coming into picture nowadays then challenges facing the industry see r and d cost we don't know how much money i told you we don't know how much money we have to pump in for a discovery for example if it is a manufacturing we know one batch require this much of solvent this much of excipients and everything but r and d we don't know how much it will require how how long you have to do research how many solvent bottles you require how much of excipient you require how much time how much workers how much manpower you require you don't know that so high cost and risk associated with the drug development is there regulatory hurdles i discussed that uh, because different countries have different regulation for example this anvisa brazil they have stringent regulations uh, and this china has different uh, we want in chinese uh, many many we have to carry out the clinical uh, trials in our region or uh, bioequivalent study in our region there are different different requirements according to the countries also then patent expiration for example uh, in the case of new drug innovators uh, the thing is uh, after the expiry of patent generic players will come into picture right so it will reduce their revenue for example i am the innovator i am the proprietor for one molecule after the expiry of that patent 20 years they will give patent term after that innovate uh, gen generic players will come and my revenue will be will be decreasing because they are going to market the product with less price compared to me right definitely so that is also a problem then public perception that is also a problem like uh, Uh, new drugs are highly priced those kind of problems are there so we can't blame people but when it comes to the point of view of industry they have pumped in lot of money for discovery they have invested lot of years you know so that is also will come into picture so then when it comes to this opportunity for growth emerging mar markets are the expanding presence in de developing countries the pharma pharmaceutical companies are you know they are expanding they are making their plans in every uh, every countries and you know they are clubbing with the uh, local companies and you know they are uh, they are emerging the and innovative therapies uh, for example orphan drugs because 
if you are investing in orphan trucks and all that they will get some perks from regulatory also so they will give some exclusivity for orphan trucks from the regulatory bodies also because their orphan trucks are very rare right this for rare diseases so much of the money you can't generate from that so regulatory body will give you some exclusivity in that case collaborations strategic alliances partnership i discussed with sanofi and what is example and all so for example sanofi is saying that i will do the r&d you do the marketing like that then sustainability nowadays this is one of the major thing you have to do all the uh, you know eco friendly things and recycling uh, green chemistry will come into picture and you know uh, whatever the recovery solvent recovery uh, effluent treatment all those things these are also a part of pharmaceutical industry so that's it thank you for watching i think you must have got an idea about pharmaceutical industry uh, for example r&d what is r&d manufacturing marketing regulatory phase you know what are the hurdles what are the challenges so how much money it will cost and you know what is the timeline so this is about new drug we will discuss about generic also in another presentation we will deep dive into that so what are the new trends what are the advancements i think you must have got a rough idea or a broad idea about this that is my intention because those who are in b pharm first year or something they are just naive right they don't know what is industry why we are studying pharmacy um, b pharmacy you know for that purpose i made this video actually so we'll come with an another video thanks for watching guys thank you uh, yeah that's it uh, thanks for watching bye